Hello and welcome to this presentation. It is one of a series by the UK Historic Towns Trust contributed to this All About This Place series. This talk is going to focus on the work that we have done and will be doing in Yorkshire. My name is Sarah Rees Jones. I'm a Professor Emeritus of Medieval History at the University of York and a trustee of the Historic Towns Trust with a special interest in developing new projects across Yorkshire. For a general introduction to the wider work of the Historic Towns Trust, I suggest that you listen to the earlier talks in this series by Vanessa Harding, our chair, and Giles Darks, our cartographer. If you've not seen them yet, I think it would be a good idea to listen to them before you watch this talk. I'm sorry to say that before 2015, there was no coverage of towns and cities in the north of England by the Historic Towns Trust, and indeed improving our coverage across Britain is one of our principal aims for the coming years and something that we are very deliberately trying to address. Fortunately, since 2015, we have improved a little. We have published an atlas for the city of York in which I was involved and maps for Hull, Beverley, Annick and Almouth, the last two, of course, in Northumberland. In each case, we worked with a different local partner. For York, it was the York Archaeological Trust. For Beverley, the Georgian Society of East Yorkshire. For Hull, the University of Hull. And for Annick and Almuth, it was the Annick Civic Society. What have we learnt? Well, one thing we are exposing is the diversity of the historical origins of Yorkshire towns and their development. Some, such as famously, of course, York itself, have their roots in the Roman period. Using our maps, you can literally retread the ground that the Romans walked and see exactly how far our modern street plan is, or indeed is not, influenced by our Roman ancestors. And in the top right here, you can see a group of people doing just that, stood in the middle of the fortress area, just in front of where York Minster now stands. Other towns, however, such as Beverley, owe their origins uh, to the Middle Ages and, and in particular in Beverley's case to the foundation of new large minster churches in the 7th and 8th centuries. Lacking the Roman foundations of a town like York, their plans are distinctively different. Beverley Minster, for example, was founded in the 8th century and a market area soon developed to its north, as you can see on the left here. After the Norman Conquest, however, in the 12th century, the town centre shifted to a brand new and much larger planned market, laid out still further to the northwest, next to a new parish church dedicated to St Mary, which you can see in the larger map on the right. This gave the whole medieval town of Beverley a rather elongated appearance. But of course, most of Yorkshire's towns grew most rapidly in the 19th and 20th centuries through the development of commerce and industry. The port town of Hull was founded in the Middle Ages as Kingston-upon-Hull and prospered as a royal town used for the collection of royal customs on trade, becoming one of the largest ports on Yorkshire's North Sea coast. In mapping its history, however, we needed to take account of the significant modern industrial and commercial development as you can see here. The historic medieval centre on the right forms only a small part of the area and features mapped on the fuller map, which is shown on the left. Some of Hull's modern history is also summarised on the reverse of the map in a gazetteer, which all the maps have, of the main buildings and places of interest shown on the map, along with some historic illustrations. So what of the future? Our newest project is work currently in progress on the city of Ripon, England's smallest city, with a history very similar to Beverley's. Here we are working with Ripon Together, an umbrella organisation that brings together business and heritage organisations in the city. In each case, the local partners have raised funding for their own project, and above all, they contribute the essential knowledge and understanding of the historical development of their town on which the mapping is based. The central picture shows a member of Ripon together, Mick Stanley, myself and our cartographer Giles Darks, meeting together in Ripon to discuss the detail of our new map, showing how we work together in real time as well as online. If you want to learn more 
about local partnerships and how they work, please visit our website. And where might we go after Ripon? One city that we would certainly like to cover is the city of Bradford, nominated as the UK City of Culture for 2025. A great deal of the information that we would need has already been collated by the West Yorkshire Archaeological Advisory Service and West Yorkshire Archives. And we are hoping to find local partners willing to create a new historical map using this and other data and knowledge. But there are many other good local candidates. What about Pontefract, for example, or Scarborough, Darlington, Stockton and Middlesbrough? These are just a few of the very diverse urban communities with deep histories to celebrate that are typical of the kinds of places that we would like to cover. But we do need willing local partners who, above all, have the expert knowledge of their local history. If you think this might be you and you would like a Historic Towns Trust map for your town, please do contact us via our website. It's worth adding that both while preparing the maps and after their publication, there are plenty of opportunities for engaging local communities. In Hull, sections from the historical maps and development were projected onto buildings in the city centre during the celebration of its year as a city of culture in 2017. Information for the maps can also be crowdsourced from many local communities and individuals, and the digital versions of the map that are created as part of the cartography, and see Giles Dark's talk for more detail about these, well, they can be used with community groups for mapping local interests and concerns of a very wide uh, variety. And to understand more about this process, it would be worth listening to J J Matthew Davis's talk in this same series, on the Layers of London project, which has done just this. In Annick, in Northumberland, uh, old technology was used. Simply a very large print of the map is displayed in the local secondary school, and the map is used in classes uh, for local pupils in both geography and history. So if you would like to find out, find out more or contact us, please do visit our website. And it remains for me simply to say thank you for listening.